We meet Danny in line at the hardware store. He's trying to return items without a receipt. The cashier ain't having it. Danny heads out the store frustrated. After letting off some steam in his car, he almost backs into a white SUV. The driver blows their horn and gives Danny the middle finger. For Danny, consider the camel's back broken. The driver speeds off and Danny goes after them. The chase goes from a major street through a residential neighborhood. As the cars maneuver, the other driver gets Danny in a sitting duck position. They fly towards Danny in reverse before slamming on the brakes. As they race off, Danny jots down the license plate number. The driver of the SUV, Amy. Amy pulls into her garage. Before she exits, she's bombarded by a flood of text messages. Most of these are about the acquisition of her company. Amy's stress level is maxed out. She's greeted by her husband, George. George seems to be the direct opposite of Amy. He's chill. Amy begins to rant, but before she gets it into second gear, George talks her down. Danny enters his messy apartment. He takes a FaceTime call from his mom and dad back in Korea. He tries to pacify their concerns by lying about the success of his business. His dad isn't buying it. His mom just wants him to find a nice Korean girl and settle down. Their parents lost their motel because their cousin Isaac was running some shady activity out of it. His brother Paul shares the apartment with them. Danny tells him about the crazy parking lot encounter. Paul is living what constitutes for a good life headed nowhere. Fast food, video games, crypto investment, and no rent to pay. Danny thinks Paul is gambling his money away on crypto. He makes Paul give him all his passwords, crypto account included. Amy has a popular business selling plants. Her employee, Maya, is a big fan. Maya is not only a fan of Amy, but also of Amy's father-in-law, George's dad, who's a world-famous sculptor. George has been pushing Maya to sell his weird blobs at her shop. Apparently, George did not inherit his dad's artistic skills. Speaking of talent inheritance, George's mom is critical of Amy for not pushing her granddaughter more towards an artistic path. Danny logs into Paul's crypto account. Turns out that Paul wasn't doing that bad. Danny does handyman work. Business is slow though. He meets up with his cousin Isaac, three months out of prison. Yes, this is the same Isaac that got Danny's parents' motel shut down. Anyway, Danny gets a $20,000 loan from Isaac. The next day, Danny deposits that money into a crypto account. Right off the bat, a $2,000 gain. Things are looking up. He goes on to the job. This time, a tree trimming gig. While elevated, he sees a white SUV. Thinking that it was the car from yesterday, he freaks out and falls. The SUV confrontation is still in his head. Amy and George attend a fancy event at the home of a potential investor. As she's approaching the entrance, she hears a loud car horn. She's startled. She's still in the moment of yesterday's event too. The event's atmosphere reminded me of Eyes Wide Shut. We meet Jordan, a business tycoon. She's the potential buyer of Amy's company. She's been giving Amy the runaround for about two years. She tells Amy to expect an offer sheet for her company within days. She also makes an off-the-cuff comment that she could copy Amy's shit instead of buying her company. Danny is at a plot of land that's up for sale. He wants to get it for his parents so they'll be able to return from Korea, but he can't get the realtor to pick up the phone. He tries this for days and days. He checks his crypto account. That shit crashed. Lost 80% of its value. He damn near choked to death when he saw the drop. Amy and Danny's road rage incident has gone viral. The people in the neighborhood are searching for the perpetrators. They want the culprits to pay for property damages. Amy watches it in her bed. She gets up and then tries to open the house safe, but the combination isn't working. Danny is on a bad losing streak. Just lost most of his money in crypto. Can't seem to get any traction on the plot of land for sale. Plus he has rage issues. He tries to murk himself. He can't even do that right. He comes across that store receipt. It jogs his memory. It jogs reason for him to keep on living. 
that reason? Revenge. He searches for the license plate of that white SUV. He finds the owner's information. Less beef. The next morning, Amy brings up the lock safe to George. He tells her that he changed the combination and that she knows why. After George leaves the house, Amy figures out the new combination. She takes out a gun and she goes to work. A girl has a gun fetish. Meanwhile, Danny has Amy's address and he's on his way. He arrives at her home. He interrupts the cool down from her little gun play. She addresses Danny through the door. To acquire entry, he gives Amy a story about rooftop damage in the neighborhood. She lets him know that she's strapped, but eventually, she lets him in to inspect. The two walk around the house. Danny asks to see the garage. Yep, the white SUV is there. This is the right house. While conversing, Amy makes the comment that her husband drives the minivan. She drives the SUV. Hmm. Danny now knows that Amy is the driver that he's looking for. He excuses himself to the bathroom. Danny exits the bathroom and proceeds to rush out of the front door. Suspicious, Amy goes to check. The floors are wet and it wasn't from her little gun party. Old boy pissed all over her bathroom. Looked like a men's urinal in the fourth quarter of a college football game in there. Amy chases after Danny. He makes the getaway. Amy gets his license plate. Little does he know, he's awakened a beast. Amy is in a rage. She doesn't know whether to clean up the piss or to go after Danny first. She looks up his license plate number. She easily finds his information. She calls him and begins to go off. He hangs up. She tries again. Voicemail. She leaves a message declaring war on his ass. George comes home and finds Amy raging with the gun in her hand. He cleans up the piss and manages to keep a level head about the situation. Danny lets Isaac store some goods at his place. Probably some stolen goods like the ones that got his parents' motel shut down. Danny tells him that he's going to be a little late repaying the money. Isaac tells him no problem. Just hand over the title to your truck. Amy ain't down with George's passive mindset. She wants to go kick some ass. And if George won't do it himself, the least he can do is drive her to Danny's place to do it. They get there and some shifty ass kids are sitting outside. They go to Danny's apartment. He's not there. Turns out it's an old address. The new motel owner tells him that Danny left when the place got shut down. Amy and George return to a flat tire. The kids, who I'm 100% sure did it, offer to change it for 40 bucks. Don't knock the hustle. Amy is straight up destroying Danny online. He needs to throw Amy off his tracks. He floats the idea to Paul to start a new company with the company in Paul's name. Paul is down. They want to market their new business to Orange County Koreans. Paul notes that Danny's ex-girlfriend Veronica now lives there. She might be a good source of business. The two successfully pitch their services to Veronica and her husband Edwin. Isaac interrupts with a call to Danny. He tells them about Amy and George looking for him at the old motel. Danny realizes that Amy isn't going to go away easily. We're introduced to Naomi. She's Jordan's sister-in-law and also a friend of Amy's. Amy had missed the meeting with Jordan because she was out hunting for Danny. Naomi gives her tips on how to navigate around Jordan. Naomi then shows Amy the viral Rose Rage video. People are crazy, right? Embarrassed, Amy deflects. Danny calls Amy and leaves a threatening voicemail. Amy goes into the second stage of her revenge. She's going to catfish his ass on Instagram. She creates a fake profile with the name Kayla. She uses her employee Maya's photos for the profile. She sends flirty messages to Danny's company's Instagram page. She doesn't get the response she expected. Danny didn't reply. Paul responded instead with a shirtless thirst trap photo of himself. George and Amy attend an art exhibit showing some of his dad's artwork. His mom was his dad's muse for some of the chair pieces. Jordan attends. She tries buying one of the pieces, but George declines. The piece is sentimental and it's not for sale. This upsets Jordan. She's not the type that's used to being told no. She makes an exit. Amy tells him that that move was bad for business. 
He brings up her obsession with money. She counters with them liking her employee Maya's Instagram photos. He then brings up the gun thing. She counters with her gun fetish being a product of him being a bly ass vanilla pushover. Paul is deep in his feelings for Kayla. Danny tries to run game on him about not being too caught up with girls on the internet, especially white girls. Paul tells him that he's just trying to have some fun and to chill the fuck out. Amy calls Danny and threatens him. Wait, is she at the club or is he just seeing things? When he leaves the club, he sees that his truck has been vandalized. I guess Amy was there. Danny and Paul have a scrap. In the argument, Danny lets it slip that he's been hanging with Isaac again. He tells him that the new business thing was Isaac's idea. We see Danny rolling up to Amy's house with a hammer. Amy is at couples counseling with old Vanilla George. She tells the therapist that she's found a new way to manage her stress. It's all that masturbating, catfishing, and vandalizing, I suppose. Deciding to up the stakes, Danny tries to set Amy's car ablaze. Right before applying the flame, he stops. He sees Amy's daughter June in the back seat. This shit has gotten way out of hand. Hell is frozen over and Paul has cleaned up the apartment. Online Kayla is making him into a new man. After the close call of almost burning a child in a car, Danny goes to church, Veronica's church. He's moved to tears by the ceremony. Amy and Jordan meet up. Jordan puts even more parameters on the deal. Now she wants a hang partner before she puts ink on the contract. Veronica and her man Edwin check up on Danny. Veronica drops subtle hints that she'd like to see Danny come back. Those hints aren't subtle enough though. While Danny is doing some pro bono repairs at the church, Edwin throws a little shade his way. You ain't slick, playboy. Amy is still catfishing. Paul wants to FaceTime. Nope. He sends her his phone number. She calls. The two have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Amy catches feelings, but then snaps out of it and abruptly ends the call. Jordan makes a surprise visit to talk about the offer. She wants Amy to stay on after the acquisition. This is not what Amy wanted. She wanted a complete separation so she'd have more family time. Danny tells Isaac that he felt God's presence at the church. Isaac clowns him about the pro bono work. Danny's back at the vacant property. He tries bargaining with the banks, but his credit is garbage. He asks them about his church getting a loan for repairs. They seem receptive to that. Danny goes to the church elders about getting the loan. He's got some scheme up his sleeve with Isaac concerning this. We close out with Danny singing at church. Paul shows up at Amy's store asking for Kayla. She tries to rush him out, but not before Maya, aka Catfish Kayla, walks out. Amy takes Paul outside and tells him that she's been catfishing him. Paul loves the person, not the photos. He kisses her. She's feeling something. Something that isn't vanilla. Where's George? Rubbing one out to Maya's Instagram. I'd heard some good things about this show from a reputable source, so I was at least expected to be entertained. It matched my expectations and almost exceeded them. The first two episodes established a wild ride, but episode three sort of pulled back a little. Could have been an eight, but I'll go with a seven. I wouldn't be surprised if at conclusion I raised it back to an eight though. Another note, visually, the show excels. I'm definitely in.